Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to go the other way now. We're going to go from two parametric equations and convert that into a Cartesian equation. So what you want to do inherently with this is for the majority of the problems, you're going to be looking at two equations. And what you want to do is you want to rearrange one to get the parameter equals, so t equals, and then substitute that into the other one. That, in the majority of cases, will work. However, some equations that you come across, you will find that actually you can't rearrange them to get t equals. In which case, you've either got to use another trick, uh, and some of these require a trick, uh, or there could be just cases where there is no Cartesian equation that represents those parametric equations. You've got to come to the understanding that actually, in some cases, algebra fails us. Okay? So not all pairs of parametric equations can be represented as a Cartesian, but some can. Now, if we have a look at number one, we've got x equals t cubed and y equals the square root of t. Now, theoretically, what you could do is you could cube root. Uh, both sides here to get t equals the cube root of x and then substitute it into y. However, I tried and tend to avoid um, anything that has a square root, cube root, fourth root, anything like that. Um, reason being is that it can get quite fiddly and quite messy and certainly with a square root I want to avoid getting any plus minus involved. Okay, so instead what I can do is if I start with the y equals root t and then I square both sides, that means that y squared is equal to t. You could then substitute that into this equation and so I'd have x is equal to t cubed, so y squared cubed. And so you could say that x is equal to y to the 6. And there is a Cartesian equation that represents number one. Okay, so that's our first one. Right, let's have a look at number two. X equals t plus five, y equals t cubed minus t. Now in this case, if I looked at the y equals t cubed minus t, there is actually no way to get t equals something on the other side. So t equals a function of just y. Okay, there's no way to actually rearrange that to do it. So the only one I can rearrange is the first one, the x equals t plus 5. So if there was a simpler one to rearrange, go with that one. So x is equal to t plus 5. So rearranging that, you can say t is equal to x minus 5. Then you can substitute that one into the second equation. So y equals x minus 5 cubed minus x minus 5. OK, and that will be my Cartesian equation. Now, you could expand out all those brackets. I don't think we need to, OK, but that's where we would be at, OK? So it might be that the question might ask you to write it in a particular format, um, but otherwise that's fine. So that's number two. Right, number three, x equals 3t squared minus 4 and y equals 8 minus t squared. Now, it can be that in certain circumstances you might be going, well, actually, I, I seem to have no choice here. I must get t equals and I would need to square root in both of these cases in order to do it. However, what might be easier to work with, and certainly is in this case, is if you take one of these equations and rearrange it to get t squared. And then you can replace the t squared in this equation with this one. So that means that x is equal to 3 lots of t squared. So 3 lots of 8 minus y take away 4. And so if we tidy that up, we get 3 eighths are 24, take away 4, so 20, take away 3y. And there's a Cartesian equation that represents number 3. Okay, so you're seeing there's a few tricks of the trade here to keep an eye on. Now, number four I've included just to, as another reiteration of this. Well, I could rearrange x 
um, and do it this way. So you could say to yourself, well, x equals 1 minus t squared rearranges to t squared is equal to 1 minus x. And then you'd have to square root both sides, which brings in a plus minus. And then I'd have to substitute that into the y. Now, this isn't wrong, but it's messy, as you can see. Okay, the fact that it is messy means that I don't particularly want to have to deal with that. I don't want to have to use that. So it might be easier to do it the other way around. So instead, if I take the y equals t minus 2 and rearrange that to get t is equal to y plus 2, I can then substitute that into the other equation. And I get something that's much easier to work with. Okay, I don't have the plus minus, I don't have the square root. Okay, so that's number four. Now sometimes, as with number five, um, the algebra can get a little bit intensive. Okay, so looking at either of these, neither of those look easier than the other. So probably best to just choose one and see where we go with it. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the t plus 1. I'm going to have to expand that left-hand side. And now I need to um, isolate the t. So if I take the xt over to the other side, I'm going to get x is equal to t minus xt. Factorise the right-hand side. So bring the t outside of a bracket and have 1 minus x inside. And then I can rearrange to get t equals x over 1 minus x. So I can now substitute that into the second equation. So y is equal to t, so x over 1 minus x, over t, so x over 1 minus x, take away 3. Now, this is a Cartesian equation, but it is absolutely ghastly having fractions within fractions. So if I multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 1 minus x, I'm not changing the size of the fraction at all. Um, but what I will do is I will get rid of the denominators. So if I times the top, the numerator, by 1 minus x, I just get x. If I multiply the denominator by 1 minus x, I just get x there then take away three lots of 1 minus x. So let's tidy that up. I've got x in the numerator. I've got x minus 3 plus 3x in the denominator. So y is equal to x over 4x minus 3. OK, and that's much more tidy. And there is my Cartesian equation that represents number 5. Now, number six, number six looks like it's going to be trouble. And the problem with number six is that neither x or y rearrange to get t equals. OK, so in other words, I've got a problem. And nine times out of ten, if you were in this situation and you couldn't rearrange either, that probably means that you can't get a Cartesian equation. However, with this one, you can. Because if you notice that actually you've got the same two elements, but one is plus, one is minus, then what you can think about is, well, if I add the x and the y together, I'm going to get t plus t, so 2t, and I'm going to have 2 over t, plus negative minus 2 over t, so they cancel each other out. So x plus y is equal to 2t. And if I also find out what x minus y is equal to, so I'm going to get t take away t, so that's 0. 2 over t take away minus 2 over t is 2 over t plus 2 over t, so that's 4 over t. And now, if I multiply these two equations together, I will cancel the t's out. So I'll get x plus y times x minus y 
is equal to 2t times 4 over t, which is just 8. And I now have a Cartesian equation that represents number 6. Now, you might be looking at that going, well, how on earth would you um, initially spot that? And, you know, fair credit, but it is quite a tough one to spot, okay? It's not one that you wouldn't, you'd really be looking out for. In some cases uh, where these kind of questions have come up uh, previously in exams, they've given you a hint. Um, it's either in the case of um, by finding x plus y and x minus y um, show that you can write the Cartesian equation as x plus y, x minus y equals k, and you need to calculate k. So there have been questions that have involved that type of problem before. But not necessarily as like do this from scratch, okay? Now when you get onto questions like number seven and number eight, and you're dealing with these trig functions, what you really need to do is remember what trig identities you have. Now remember we've got the sine squared plus cos squared is one. Okay, or theta, if we go with theta. Now, if you divide both sides by sine squared, you get 1 plus cot squared theta is equal to cosec squared theta. And if you divide the original equation by uh, cos squared, you get tan squared theta plus 1 is sec squared theta. So if we have a look at number seven here, we've got cot and cosec, which fits into this one here. So we know that cot theta is x. So we could say one plus x squared, one plus cot squared is equal to cosec squared, and cosec theta would be y over two, halving both sides. So that would be one half y squared. So you could write that as 1 plus x squared is equal to a quarter y squared. And that would be your Cartesian equation that matches those parametric equations. So if you spot um, parametric equations that involve um, trigonometric functions that fit nicely into any of these identities, then we can use those identities uh, for substituting in. So that's number seven. And number eight works in a very similar way. Because now you've got sec theta and tan theta. So it works with that identity. So tan squared, which is y over two, so a half y squared plus one is equal to sec squared, which is one third x. So one third x squared. So that would be a quarter y squared plus one is equal to a ninth x squared. And there is your Cartesian equation for number eight. So in a lot of cases in those first five, okay, we were looking at rearranging one of the equations, substituting it into the other. It doesn't matter where you went, whether you end up with x equals or y equals at the end, doesn't matter at all. Number six, uh, we had to use a trick, okay, adding and subtracting the two equations and multiplying them together. In questions seven and eight, we had to revert to trigonometric identities.